It's the most metalful time of the year. Halloween singing and eardrums are bleeding, so be full of fear. It's the most metalful time of the year. Happy Metalween, bitches! Last year I talked about some lame rock and roll vampires, but not this year. Throw me that intro. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew gonna drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones around to be had. Today's episode, Rockula. <sighs> Hello, boils, ghouls, and all you creatures from beyond. I'm called Matt. And it's that glorious time of year where we look at the most metal horror films there are. Metalween. And today I've got the scariest, bloodiest, goriest, most satanic metal horror film there is. Rockula. A musical comedy from the 90s. Rockula is a film from 1990 directed by Luca Beravocci, the man behind the ghoulies. If that means anything to you. He wrote this film with Ghoulies co-writer Jeffrey Levy. It stars Dean Cameron, known for small roles in Straight Out of Compton, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and Kicking and Screaming. A film I love very much that you can listen to me talk about on a podcast. Shameless plug to my appearance there. It's also got a musical cast of one-hit wonders. There's Tony Basil, who wrote Mickey, and Thomas Dobley, who wrote She Blinded Me With Science. Metal anthems, to be sure. To be fair, Basil and Dolby both have careers outside their hit. Dolby did a lot of session work, including stuff with Foreigner and David Bowie. Pertinent to Metal Ween, he did the keyboard part for Def Leppard's Photograph. Basil is a choreographer who just recently worked on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and has some acting work, including possibly the first metal movie, Easy Rider. And Bo Diddley. Not a one-hit wonder. Other noteworthy performers include Susan Tyrell, of some notoriety for her work with John Waters, and her appearances in The Forbidden Zone, and Tony Cox, who viewers might remember from Black Superman, even though he didn't have an IMDb credit for it. He has one now. You know why? Because I asked IMDb to put it there. I couldn't even remember the character's name, so now he's just credited as Bernard's friend. You're welcome, Tony Cox. However, possibly the most prolific person on this movie was Jason Schwartzman's half-brother, John Schwartzman, the cinematographer. He's gone on to be the cinematographer on some big-budget projects, a couple of Michael Bay films, The Amazing Spider-Man, Jurassic World... So, like, nothing with good cinematography, but he gets around. So let's dig through the ditches, burn through the witches, and slam the back of my Rockula! We start with this pretty sick animated opening with pretty good music to go with it. We start with our rocker of the night playing that great rock hit, Chopsticks. This is Ralph, a vampire, and his... Mom? He calls her mom most of the movie, but she calls him her brother at one point? Maybe it's like a Cullens thing where they lie about their relationship to cover up the fact that they're hundreds of years old? On the other hand... You look great, Mom. Creepy! His mom can't see her reflection, but Ralph can talk to his. There's... Kind of a reason for this, but not really. His reflection also belittles him, which is kind of stupid. You're making fun of yourself, idiot. Seriously, who would just constantly make fun of and be mean to an alternate version of their own selves? You're talking about me, aren't you? 
Oh, was I being too subtle? The fuck, dude? Fight me. So it's one day before Friday the 13th, and Ralph's upset about that because of a curse. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's a pun before that exposition dump. Let's take a moment and reflect. Reflect! Get it? Mirror reflect! (sighs) Okay, he goes to the bar and they dump the exposition there. Okay, time me. 16th century falls in love with a girl, but her pirate boyfriend gets mad and kills her with a hand bone before he can turn her into a vampire, so she keeps getting reincarnated, and they meet every 22 years until he can turn her into a vampire before the pirate kills her on Halloween. Woo! Let's get back to the jokes. But Ralph decides this year he's not gonna meet the girl. She's better off without me. She's gonna die without you. Ah, but he was too late. It's midnight, and she's hit him with her car. Just forget you ever saw me, okay? Because the next thing you know, we're going to go out on a date, we're going to fall in love, and then some crazy pirate's going to peg you with a ham bone. What a normal thing to say. Also, he says the cycle started 400 years ago, but if it only happens every 22 years, then you're actually a little over. 396 years or 418 years would be multiples of 22. You could have just changed it slightly. At the very least, you shouldn't have drawn attention to it. It's every 22 years, so that means in the last 400 years, I have met, fallen in love, and lost Mona 14.5 times. You didn't even get the math right. It's 18.1818 repeating. That's right. Forget it. Just forget the fact that we are the oldest living virgins walking the planet. What are you talking about? You're the biggest slut I know every time I see you with a different girl. Ah, see? It's allegorical. This is the version of me that wants bisexuals to be seen as something other than slutty perverts, and this is the version of me that's a slutty bisexual pervert. Rockula is a bisexual icon. Mona, it turns out, is in a band with the Baroness from G.I. Joe when Stanley, a snobby rich kid, shows up and... plays a commercial... for coffins? It's a sale that some of you aren't going to miss. It's funny, but it's sort of out of nowhere. You're not UHF movie. Move on. Actually, maybe you shouldn't, because this next scene is fucking weird as shit. First, Ralph's mom asks him for help in a bubble bath. Could you give me a hand with this? Weird. And then Tony Cox shows up. This is also the only place his mom calls him her brother. Ah. Uh. Big Al, this is my brother, Ralph. Then, uh... I'm a vampire. (laughs) What the fuck? At least give him a beat before you start laughing. You didn't even have time for this vampire's kiss reference. Nah, sorry, Cage. Moments passed. So finally, 15 minutes in, we get some rock music. In a dream sequence. Is, is it hypocritical to say she's not a very good singer? Like, I know I opened this with a song that was not very well sung, but I'm at least aware of the fact that I'm not a good singer. This is a professional movie. They could have hired someone who could sing. Somehow this dream means that if he doesn't save Mona this time, she's dead for good? Okay. You're gonna go out in the sunlight. I'm protected. Sunblock? That's all it takes for a vampire to go out in the sun? Well, hell, I now want to be a vampire more than ever. Hit, hit me up. Just, just bite me. Fucking bite me. He cannot fly, however. So that's lame. But he does survive jumping out of a third story window, so win some, lose some. Hmm, <laughs> lose. Very rock and roll. I mean, not that I dislike it, I'm just feeling a little strapped for rock right now. That's better. I wonder if, uh... (laughs) Okay, let me start by saying, was not expecting a dick joke in this movie that's, you know, been like children's movie levels so far. Uh, Second off, can you get in trouble for indecent exposure if someone sees... Your reflection with its dick out, but you're clearly turned around facing them? 
I feel like at that point you just assume you were seeing something and move on with your life. Anyways, he finds Mona at Club Hell. So she's like, a stripper? I mean, that would be an excuse for not being able to sing that well. Although Ralph's presence briefly distracts her. And I think I might have made the Baroness joke too soon. Her bandmate is clearly the Hamburglar. Why are you following me? I'm, I'm not following you. Yes, you are. Okay, I'm following you. <laughs> what? You're not even. You just happened to meet her once, and then you went to a show she was publicly advertising. That's not following her, that's just running into her twice. Ralph then accidentally says he's in a band, but fails to come up with a name or a genre. Just say you're the drummer from Dream Theater. It works for me. Do you play around? Excuse me? Ah, see? Rockula. Bisexual icon. Or bi as we call them. So now Ralph has to start his own band, and there's a funny montage of all the genres he could do. Just as long as he doesn't do a lame 80s rap. A vampire in a rock band. What are you going to call it? Rockula? Rockula. Rockula. Say what you will, at least the pace is brisk. Also, apparently Stanley's band got a gig one day after forming. Although they've got Bo Diddley, so... This is dork, Stanley. I'll take that back. Okay. You're an egotistical, pseudo-intellectual, money-grubbing slut. Oh, so he's Ben Shapiro. Alright, the first big Rockula showpiece. They've told about the for 300 years. But his new cape at the neighborhood Sears. It's not a bird, not a plane that you saw. Crashing into that solid brick wall. He's Rockula. Eh? And these are like the least metal lyrics. So he stays all night. Orders Chinese takeout, some chow mein and a bowl of steamed rice, please. Thank you. Ralph and Mona set up a date for the next day, but Mom gets in the way on his way out. Oh, we're gonna have to have over for dinner. <laughs> for dinner? Because they're vampires? <laughs> they're gonna eat her. But while Mona and Ralph are on their date, Stanley talks to a psychic. He's a vampire. A vampire? A vampire, Stanley. Yours is no ordinary destiny. Boy, that psychic sure looks familiar and seems to have intimate knowledge of Ralph's life. I, I sure hope it's not an established character. You must kill her, Stanley. Yes? Yes, and then she will be all yours. I could mount and stuff her. What the fuck? This took a hard turn fast. Pirate with a rhinestone peg leg. A rhinestone peg leg? A rhinestone peg leg. And you must dispatch her with a ambon. Ambon. Okay, 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 okay. Ambon. I love that he's just going along with this. She asked you to murder someone. What is wrong with you, dude? Ah, another Rockula performance. Let's hear that rock mu- there was this girl named Mina. She wanted Moena. She was singing back for Ike and Tina. Rap? Rap? In my fucking rock movie? You know, you know what? You know, you know what? I haven't done it yet because I kind of like this movie, but uh, this this one deserves it. Next. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Looks like Vampilla Ice's performance made everyone come. You're great. No, he wasn't. Rockula's hot mom shows up to invite Mona for dinner, which is so embarrassing. Oh boy, I love Before Sunrise. Movie idea. Before Sunrise remake, but one of them's a vampire, which is why they can't be out after sunrise. So, like, my understanding is he just has to kiss her and she's safe? So why not kiss her here? Or, or does he have to marry her? Or turn her into a vampire? Does none of this matter and she just has to not die? 
The ending seems to suggest it's just not dying, so we'll go with that. Anyway, this cheesy power ballad starts, and you think it's just cheesy music, but no, they're actually singing it. They're actually singing it. In the dark and deepest shadows, well hit from the light of day, I wait for the perfect moment. Beautiful. Also, a car hits Ralph, and the driver doesn't stop with a guy on his hood. I thought it was like... Stanley or someone, but no, it's just like a guy. Wait, that was a music video? Okay, he met her on the 13th and has to save her before Halloween. That's uh, 18 days, and some of those have already been spent, so we'll say 15 days they had to write this song, record this song, film the music video, and edit the music video. That's a pretty quick turnaround time, although it's doable. But then... Listen, Mona, about dinner with my mother tonight. They made this video in two days! Even assuming Mona had already written this song, which is unlikely considering how much it ties into things she doesn't know about, it still take them more than two days to record, film, and edit this video. Oh, this is in honor of Ralph here, or should I say, uh, Rockula. It's pretty, uh, pungent, wouldn't you say, Ralphie? Smells great. I love garlic. Have you ever seen one of these before? Yes. So this vampire isn't affected by garlic, crosses, or sunlight. He still lives with his parental figure, and he has to turn a girl into a vampire to save her. Holy shit! Twilight is a ripoff of Rockula! Anyway, dinner with Mom goes poorly because she keeps talking about being hundreds of years old. But Mona doesn't know they're vampires. And then Mom gets a song. Oh god, she means sex. And then she does a rap verse. Yo, girly girl, I'm back again. And all I wanna do is jam with my friends. You know, Tony, this might be why you never got a second hit. No! <laughs> you threw off my groove. I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the Emperor's groove. Ralph runs into a graveyard right up to Charles Band's grave. Ugh, so I no longer have to review Full Moon movies. It's gonna be really awkward if Charles Band dies before this video comes out. Mona, you are 422 years old. This is your 19th lifetime. Oh, now they've rounded up to 19. Still only 418 years. Your math is off. And to prove he's a vampire, Ralph turns into a bat. Yeah, that, that looks like something I'd see at Charles Band's grave. This, this is my fault. I, I thought I could handle this. I thought I was more up in this. But this, this is just too much. No. You know, I was joking about the bisexual allegory before, but, uh, starting to think I was on to something. Anyways, third act breakup montage. It's everything that's in all of these montages. Right down to pirates whipping stuffed animals off a plank. That's usually in these montages, right? I, I don't watch romance movies. I'm working on it. Jesus Christ, he's gonna kill a pig in his apartment. Who is this movie for? Like, the, the humor is about on the level with like a kid's movie most of the time. But it's a PG-13. It's it's just edgy enough that you really shouldn't show it to kids. But, like, an appropriate audience would just find this lame. Like, the only people that you could show this to would be, like, adults at Halloween. Which I guess is fair enough. Oh no, the psychic that told Stanley to kill Mona was Rockula's hot mom. I got everything ready, the liquid nitrogen, everything. All I need is... Wow. 
Real rhinestones. Hold on. The bisexual character keeps failing to get into a relationship because of a sparkly pirate with a huge bone. I see you, Rockula. I see you. What the fuck is this shit? Like, at least the rap song was hilariously stupid. This is just sad. Oh, but Mona and Ralph are back together. No, no reason. They don't need to talk this out. They just decide they're together again. Oh, thank God. Someone put the song out of its misery. Stanley kidnaps the girl, and Ralphie's on the hunt. And somehow his reflection knows where she is? Who's your best friend in the whole world? I'm sorry, what, 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 what? I can't hear you. You are! That's kind of pathetic that he's his own friend. We don't even like each other. Somehow I think that's worse. I'm sorry, did you want to be friends? No, fuck you. That's what I thought. Mm. It's gonna be close. I believe you mean... Honey, it's getting close to midnight. So Stanley and Ralph have a sword fight with metal clanging noises, even though it's a bone and a peg leg. Gay. But Ralph finds out it was his mom who kept getting Mona killed. Die, vampire scum! Ow! Oh! That was my mother you just boned. Well, this movie's not topping that. I'll see you guys next week. Bye! So he knocks Stanley into a cryo chamber, don't ask, to be awakened in the year 2999, where he'll make friends with a robot and a cyclops. Oh, Ralphie, would you forgive me? For what? Inciting the murder of my girlfriend 18 times in the last 400 years? Nah, you're forgiven. But Mirror Ralph wants out, so he smashes the barrier between our worlds. And... is Elvis. It's, uh... It's not really clear if he just dressed up as Elvis, or if alternate Ralph was just... Elvis the whole time. So maybe they're implying Elvis got trapped in the mirror dimension and somehow became Rockula's reflection. That's the only way this movie should end. That's Rockula. I'm down. Obviously Rockula's not good. But it's a fun kind of bad. The type of cheesy schlock you put on at a Halloween party. I am baffled by the film's tone. Coming out in 1990, it's stuck between being a lame 80s teen comedy and a lame 90s wacky comedy. It's too edgy and juvenile to appeal to anyone outside of an adult crowd on Halloween. Let's be real, Halloween's not about being scary. It's about being goofy with horror iconography. It's lame to be sure, and the songs can be a bit uninspired, if not completely embarrassing. But I've seen Christmases here again, so this is at least listenable. I do wish they'd leaned a little more into the rock elements, but by 90 that was kinda on its way out. I don't think Grungula would have flown. Overall, you can pretty much figure out how you're gonna like this movie based entirely on the title. So, yeah, I liked it. If you want some more rock and roll vampires, you can check out my Queen of the Damned review from last Halloween. And until next time, I'm gonna be right here listening to the most metal jam I can think of. Anybody go bowling anymore? It's the Hev 
heaviest season of all. We'll go demon slaying while our heads are banging, so join me this fall for the hev heaviest season of all. There'll be guitars for shredding and heads for beheading and setting everything ablaze. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the goriest splatter flicks man's ever made. It's the most metalful time of the year. So throw up your damn horns and grab you some popcorn and plenty of beer. It's the most metalful time of the year. Metal!